Hi, my name is John Dunsworth. Today, for the purposes of this project, we're going to play this machine, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to lose money. The government says you can't win if you don't play when they sell you lottery tickets. Now, what are we doing? We're going maximum bet. I was 13 when I started playing pro line, and 15 when poker started getting really bad. Well, actually, no. I know gambling's been part of my life my entire life. My name's Jeremy D'Souza. I'm 21, and uh, I'm a professional blackjack player. People wouldn't know that when I was in grade five, I was taking the bus home from school and buying scratch and win lottery tickets. See, this little guy, this is what we all love to see, this magic -y little horse. There's some kids I know were playing for, for tuition. And slowly the $80 turned into $200, turned into $300. We're down to $450 now. We got two more bets after this. Are we going to win? $0.25 cents left. Two minutes, 50 seconds for 20 bucks. We would have lost $400 an hour on this machine. In the last 10 years, gambling among people under 30 years of age has grown at an explosive rate. Whether it is internet poker, lottery tickets, scratch and win tickets, sports betting, casinos or underground poker venues, gambling among young people is a huge and growing trend and it shows no signs of going away. Everybody, I mean, it's just, it's the thing to do now. Poker's all over the place, it's on TV, it's, it's everywhere, and it's like the cool thing to do. I met somebody who was uh, kind of into gambling, his parents gambled, and said, hey, let's kind of go down. And we worked, we worked together, so it was kind of easy. And, uh, you know, we played a little bit of slots, and thought, wow, that's a lot of money. It's just this rush. It's like, I'm, I, for some reason, I used to love money, and I thought that I would only be happy if I had money. And you see this opportunity win tons and tons of money by gambling. We have seen over the last five years with respect to youth gambling is that more and more adolescents, more and more young adults are viewing gambling as a very normalized form of entertainment. No, I played blackjack when I was a kid and we used to pay for pennies and nickels and stuff like that. And it never used to win. And that kind of sucked. It really sucked. But then I wanted to play more so I could win and then I would like sit home at home and practice which is like insane for like an eight-year-old. If you come from a rich neighborhood, a lot of those boys gamble. So it's kind of like, it's cool. It's a proper thing to do. It's OK. Like, it's accepted. Tens of thousands of Canadian teens are gambling. But how did they start? Was it through their parents or older brothers and sisters? Or was it through advertising or something they discovered on their own? In a grade three classroom, four classroom, I will get about 75% of the class that already know how to play poker and have poker sets at home and are playing poker with parents, are playing poker with friends. I got introduced pretty early. I was about eight years old, 10 years old. It was my Uncle Dougie, okay? He was a piano player and uh, lived right beside the Montreal Forum. So uh, he bet, and I was just betting for fun. Growing up in my, in my home, Cards were always a big thing. Everybody always played cards. My grandparents always played cards. And it was just something that always fascinated me, one of those games that just I took a liking to from, from early on. There was a story of one young, uh, one young little boy who talked about the fact that he spent a lot of time with his dad playing poker online. Um, and that's where we sort of see behaviors are starting early. Um, young people are learning that this is an appropriate behavior to be involved in um, and may not know that there's potential dangers associated with it. What we're starting to see is more and more kids actually getting involved with gambling at an earlier and earlier age. We have parents who are encouraging their kids to gamble by saying, go in the basement on the weekend, play poker with your friends, I'll bring in the food, without ever giving them the warning signs. And they would prefer the kids in playing poker because they don't want them out doing drugs or alcohol. My son, as far as I know, is playing poker online. Um, he was using my credit card, and I have taken the credit card back from him. 
the older I got, the more intrigued I got because these older guys had this influence on me where, you know, these guys are older and cooler and they're gambling, so, you know, I'm going to start gambling. Two years before I was even legal to start to set foot in a casino, I started memorizing basic strategy. And I thought, all right, let's start doing countdowns and let's try and learn the skill. Everyone was into playing blackjack, so we played blackjack for a couple of bucks here and there. We made some money, lost some money, whatever it was, we spent the money right away and went on vacation and had a lot of fun. I'd play the slot a little bit and then I'd go to the table and I played and it was really fun. <laughs> it was, it was really fun. I played my first machine, I won $700. Then I played the machine next to it and I won $1,200. Then I played another machine and I won $3,300. Every machine I touched hit a jackpot that day. My first experience with blackjack in terms of playing or finding it profitable was watching a documentary on Discovery Channel called Breaking Vegas. And there was an episode where they showcased the whole MIT team and the way they counted cards, beat the casino, and all their bankroll management, the way everyone made money, went to Vegas every weekend. And the science behind it and the math behind it made sense. Whether it's the first time or their hundredth time, gamblers often talk about the rush they feel when they start gambling. For some, this rush can be addictive and quickly becomes a part of the gambling experience. I remember this one day I probably bought like, f I was 19 years old and I bought probably about $400 worth of scratch win tickets. And, um, and I put them all on my Petro Canada card. I just kept going and going and going, was convinced I was gonna win like, I think it was like $25,000. And, you know, no serious consequences, not a lot of money going either way. Just, just kind of like uh, an activity that kept us going. Now all of a sudden, your $15 bet turns into 30 bucks. Uh, you start understanding how the rules are played, and your 30 bucks turns into 60. You double down. There's all the, you know, the lingo that goes with it. I had met some friends who, who, who I was playing with, and they had told me, they, oh, we, we play in these, in these underground poker clubs. And I was fascinated by the idea. It sounded like it was something I shouldn't be doing. And being a 20-year-old, 19, 20-year-old kid, that's, I wanted to do whatever I wasn't allowed to do. And you only needed like $80 to get in and play and feel like you're a part of something. And we went. And first time I went, I was a winner. Uh, my first trip to a casino was to Fallsview in, uh, I think, 2005. I had a $250 bankroll. And I was playing $5 men, and I made like 100 bucks. Pretty soon it was just a matter, you know, of time, and, and money didn't really matter anymore. All of a sudden, your $100 didn't really matter until you left the casino. You know, the $100 is just a chip. 